Hi guys, welcome you all to my channel. Is this your first time of coming to my channel? Thanks a lot. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to make a simple video on how to cut and sew one shoulder tulip gown, okay? One shoulder tulip gown. If you're interested in learning how to achieve this, then don't forget to stay tuned. Please, in the course of this tutorial, if you have any question, feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or any topic you want us to make a video on. So what are the basic measurements required in order for you to achieve your one shoulder tulip gown? You have your shoulder measurements, bust, waist, hip and your gown length. So let's go ahead now and calculate our measurements. So our shoulder measurement is 14. 14 divided by 2 we have 7 plus 1 half inch for our sewing allowance. We have 7 and half inches. Our bust is 38. 38 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1 we have 11 inches. Our waist is 32, 32 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 2, we have 10.5 inches. Our hip is 40, 40 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1, we have 11.5 inches. Our gown length is 57, 57 plus 2, we have 59 inches are the basic measurements required in order for you to achieve your one shoulder to lip gown. Now, I know you are going to ask me that what about your shoulder to bust and shoulder to waistline in order for you to achieve this style. Now, there are basically two ways in which you can achieve this. The first one is to go ahead and take the measurement directly. But what if in an opportunity where or a situation whereby you are not opportune to take the body measurement. So the question here is, how will you achieve your shoulder to bust and how will you achieve your shoulder to waist? And I have a detailed tutorial where I explain distance calculation on how to get your shoulder to bust, shoulder to waist, waist to hip, waist to knee length, all the standard measurements and calculations for that. I'm going to put down the link in the description box below. Please go ahead and check out that video after watching this okay so these are the basic measurements required and i'm going to explain how to achieve every of those measurements which includes shoulder to bust and shoulder to waistline when we get to the cutting part of this tutorial please if you have any question in the course of this tutorial please feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or any topic you want us to make a video on and don't forget to join us on facebook see the designs on instagram CG designs and also visit our website. We have amazing fashion illustration on our website. All the details are going to be in the description box below. So now let's move to the cutting part of this tutorial. So guys, the first thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and draft our dress. So I have my pattern paper here. So we are going to go ahead now and mark our basic calculation, okay? So the basic calculation, which is also known as distance calculation. So we go ahead now and take our basic measurements, which is shoulder to arm o 9 inches. Shoulder to arm o 9 inches. Shoulder to bust 9 and a half. Shoulder to under bust 13 inches. Shoulder to waist 16 inches. Waist to waist to hip 9 inches. Waist to hip 9 inches. Waist to knee length we have 18 inches. Now I know you might want to ask that how did we come across this measurement? I have a detailed tutorial where I explain distance calculation. I'm going to go ahead and put down the link in the description box. Please check out the video in order for you to understand what we have here. So let me just come again. Now this is our shoulder measurement. Shoulder to arm or 9 inches. Shoulder to bust 9 and a half. Shoulder to under bust 13. Shoulder to waist 16 inches. Waist to hip 9 inches. Waist to knee length 18 inches. And of course we have our gown length. So I'm going to go ahead now with my pattern master. And pattern masters are available at our store. I will go ahead and connect these lines together ahead now to connect the lines together so the next thing we are basically going to do now is to go ahead and mark our dart measurements but before then please go ahead and label your line so this is our arm or bust under bust waist hip 
and knee length. So once you are done with that, you go ahead now and mark your dart measurement. So my dart measurement is four inches. We'll go ahead and mark four inches for our dart. Mark four inches. So our dart line basically stops on the knee length. So we have four inches. And because what we want to achieve is one shoulder tulip dress with slits, we are also going to extend these four inches up to your gown length because our gown has a slit, okay? So the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and connect the four inches together. And that this is basically what you have so the next thing you are going to do now is you are going to come to your waistline and mark your waist measurements on your waistline mark half inches for your darts so the half inches is basically for your darts okay so this is what you have now waist to that line waist to that line is six inches waist to that line is six inches and this is because your waist your dart doesn't get to your hip okay your dart doesn't get to your hip so waist to your dart line is six inches while your dart line is eight or nine inches so make sure that you don't stitch your dart up to your hip line you should stop six inches from your waistline so that is the essence of this six inches line so we'll go ahead now and connect our dart this way you can see that our dart stopped at the six inches line the next thing you are going to do now because what you want to achieve also has a bustier effect you will go ahead and let me see what you're going to do now is you are going to go ahead and extend this dart line to your shoulder and the reason why you are extending this is because your dress has a bustier effect okay so we want to also achieve our bustier also so extend this dart line to your shoulder line once you are done on your under bust go ahead and mark half inch on both sides on your under bust mark half inch on both sides this is what you have connect your under bust line to your bust line this way Connect it this way. You can see what we have. You can see what we have. So to connect your underbust to your waistline, you are basically going to use the inner part of your pattern master to connect the lines together. So once you connect the line, this is what it looks like. You can see this is basically what it looks like. Our bustier is almost ready. Now on your shoulder line, go ahead and mark 5 inches on your shoulder line. Starting from this dart line, mark 5 inches this way. Once you mark your 5 inch, connect it to your bust line. Connect it to your bust line. So this is basically what we have. So the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and mark our basic measurements. Okay. So we want to go ahead now and mark our bust measurements. Now, before you mark your shoulder measurement, please go ahead and close your shoulder dart before taking your shoulder measurement. So you close it this way just to close up this shoulder dart. Okay, so I've gone ahead now to close it. Now you go ahead and take your shoulder measurement after closing your shoulder dart. After closing your shoulder dart, you now go ahead and take your shoulder measurement. So our shoulder measurement now is seven and a half, is 11.5. Our bust measurement is 11.5 inches. We've gone ahead now to mark bust 11.5, waist 11 inches, waist 11 inches, hip 11.75. On our hip now, we mark 11.75. Now, on your knee length, this is where we have our knee line. You can see at this hip line we have 11.75 so basically go ahead and deduct one inch from this part okay so if we have 11.75 okay let's just say we have 11.75 we deduct one inch from it we are going to have 10.75 so you are going to go ahead now and mark your 10.75 all the way to your gown length 10.75 all the way to your gown length okay you're basically marking it all the way to your gown length and don't forget also that our dart line also goes all the way down to 
your gown length okay now once you are done the next thing you're going to do now is to connect your measurements together so you connect your bust line to waist waist to hip so we've gone ahead now to connect that you can see on our gown length we've gone ahead now to mark 10.75 and we extend it all the way to your gown length so this is basically what your dress looks like or your pattern paper rather so the next thing we want to do now is to go ahead and get our mono strap so there are two ways in which you can achieve this mono strap the first one is to achieve it on your pattern paper why the second one is to achieve it on your fabric okay so the first thing i'm going to do now is let me just go ahead now and cut this out let me go ahead and cut this out now once i cut this out we'll be able to focus on this upper part where we have our mono stripe don't forget that the mono strap is only from this upper part while your lower part of your dress still remains your regular um pencil effect so let's go ahead now and cut it out so this is what we have for the upper part i'm going to show you guys how to get the mono strap on the fabric i feel like for beginners it's going to be easy to achieve it on the fabric but however if you want me to show you guys how to achieve it on the pattern paper please go ahead and drop that in the comment section and i will make another tutorial showing you guys how to achieve it on the pattern paper so what we have now for our front block is this we have this part for the upper block and then this is what we have so the combination of these you can see gives us a complete front block so i'll go ahead now and set this aside and mark the back block now i just want to mark the back block and for the back block basically i'm going to be marking just the upper block so now let's go ahead and take our distance calculation shoulder to arm o nine inches shoulder to bust nine and a half shoulder to under bust 13 shoulder to waist 16 inches so this is what we have i'll go ahead now and connect the lines together now the reason why i am marking just the upper block of this back block is because one i don't want this tutorial to be too long two the difference between your back block and your front block for the lower side is basically your zip allowance okay which i'm going to show you guys how to do that right so now this is what we have for the back block next thing you're going to do now is to go ahead and mark your zip allowance so for our zip allowance now we are going to be using two inches for our zip allowance so we've gone ahead now to mark two inches all the way for our zip allowance and then we've gone ahead to connect it together so the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and mark our dash measurements which is four inches on our waistline we mark four inches for our dart line go ahead and connect the lines together once you are done this is what you have on the lower part which is your waistline go ahead and mark half inch on both sides for your dart allowance so connect the lines together and this is what you have now the next thing we are going to do basically now is to go ahead and mark our basic measurements our bust is 11.75 we'll go ahead now and mark that our waist is 11 point 11 inches our waist is 11 inches this is basically what we have so we'll go ahead now and connect the lines together now we we'll mark our shoulder measurement shoulder measurement is 7.5 use your arm on curve connect your shoulder line to your bust line connect your shoulder line to your bust line then connect your bust line to your waistline basically so that's what we are just doing so i'm gonna head now to connect that and i will cut this out so is to go ahead and mark our neckline we mark the neckline for the front to be three and a half so just mark it to indicate 
what you want so this is what we have for the back block the upper piece of the back block you will discover that we don't have any bustier effect of course the reason why we didn't mark all of that here is because you don't have your bust at the back okay so this is what we have for the upper block now for the lower piece now this is the lower piece of your front block isn't it this is the lower piece of your front block so what you are going to do now when you want to mark your when you want to mark your back block you will discover that this is actually shorter than this so you just go ahead and add two inches all the way down for your zip allowance i don't know if you guys get it but the difference between your back block for the lower side and the front block for the lower side is just the two inches for your zip allowance so you can either go ahead and add two inches on the pattern paper or when you are transferring it to the fabric you add two inches so i don't need to go ahead and explain all of this so that this video won't be too long but let me know if you have any questions so this is what we have now let's transfer it to our fabric where i'm going to explain you know the monostrap effect and also the adding of the allowance for the back block so guys now we've gone ahead to cut it out we've gone ahead now to cut it out you can see what we have for the lower part our lower part we have our normal tulip pencil skirt so we'll go ahead now and set this lower part aside and i'm still going to come and show you guys how to achieve your slits on this part but for now let's just set this lower part aside now this upper part let's go ahead now and connect our shoulder line to our bust line okay so that i can cut it out before showing you guys how to achieve your monostrap effects please in the course of this tutorial if you have any question please feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or any topic you want us to make a video on and training is available both online training and physical training so this is what we have for the upper part now what we are so guys now we want to transfer our pattern to our fabric okay so i'm making use of this beautiful african fabric and african fabrics are available at our store okay so the link is going to be in the description box below so i've gone ahead now to fold my fabric into two after folding my fabric into two I'll go ahead now and place my pattern paper on it and I'll cut this out so we are cutting the lower piece of the front block okay so fold your fabric into two place your pattern and then you cut this out so guys after cutting it out this is what you have so go ahead now and set this aside so guys now we want to cut the lower piece for the back block now don't forget that i said i didn't want to redo the lower piece of the back block because the difference between the front block and the back block is basically just adding your zip allowance to it right so i said there are two ways in which you can achieve that you can add your pattern paper or you can go ahead and remark it but what i want to do now is i'm going to go ahead now and place my pattern paper on it this way you can see i folded my fabric into two i've gone ahead now to place my pattern paper now you will discover that i didn't place this pattern paper on the edge you can see this is where my pattern paper is and this is where my fabric is so these two inches here will serve as our zip allowance okay so this is just like a short cut to achieve it rather than drafting this all over again so place it this way you can see just leave about two inches which will serve as your zip allowance on the fabric and then you go ahead and cut this out so for this lower part now we are going to have two pieces for the lower parts of this fabric okay so guys after that you can see we are going to have two pieces for the back block so i'll go ahead now and set this aside so guys now we want to cut out the upper part of the front block as you can see this is our front block where we have the bustier effect so what i'm going to do now is i'm basically going to go ahead and open this up 
right so i will go ahead now and cut I cut out this this is what i have so i basically have two pieces so now i'm going to use these two pieces now to cut out the fabric and also draft a mono strap effect so i'm gonna head now to fold my fabric into two is this this way okay and i'll cut this out okay so once we cut it out we are going to have one single piece for this and we are going to have two pieces for this side right so guys this is what we have you can see that we've gone ahead now to fold our fabric place our pattern so let's want to notch where we have our neckline okay so let's open this up and let's see what it looks like so this is what we have this is what we basically have so the next thing you are going to better understanding because i'm trying to consider beginners and i want you guys to actually get it that is why i'm using like this method which i feel is the simplest method so what i'm going to do is i'm going to couple this up to give me a single piece before getting out the neckline with that this is what we have for the upper part part okay so this is what we have for the lower part why for the upper part this is basically what we have so far you can see now go ahead now and set this aside we are going to have a slit right so for you to achieve your slits for this lower part basically place your pattern paper on it your slit is usually where you have your dart line okay so place your pattern paper on it you can see where we have our dart line so mark this dart line where you have your dart line mark it on the fabric right mark it on the fabric so uh that line is four inches so we're going to go ahead now and just mark four inches on the fabric so mark four inches this is where we marked as our dart line okay so connect the lines together to give us a straight line four inches okay this is four inches which is our dart line so i'm marking it from this center front so the next thing you're going to do now is to determine how high you want your slit to be and honestly it depends on you you can take it as high as this you can take it very high you can reduce it it depends on you but basically to know where to mark your dart line simply mark your four inches on this part so i'll go ahead now and open it's up on just one side please you are opening it up on one side so don't make a mistake of folding your fabric into two this way or before you cut it out if you do that you are going to it's short you spoil the clothes already so open it up you can see what i'm doing open it up this is where we marked our four inches so automatically this is where our slit is going to be so i'll go ahead now and just open this up so guys i've opened this up you can see our slit so you can choose any part that you want it could be right hand it could be left hand it depends on you basically so this is what we basically have i've opened this up you can see our slit and i'll just go ahead now and set this aside so guys for the upper parts for the back block this is the upper part of the back block so you fold your fabric into two once you are done you place your pattern paper on it you place your pattern paper on it and then you go ahead and cut this out now you also discovered that i have not cut out the arm of this part because of course the back block also we also have your mono strap effect so once we are able to get the mono strap effect for the front block we'll be using that to also cut out the back block and the main reason why you have to do that is because so that your mono strap can fall on the same part so this is basically what we are going to have for the back block now so once i go ahead now and couple up the front block then we'll go ahead and cut it out so the full piece of the back block now we have have these to be two pieces for the upper part so for the lower part of the back block you can see what we have we also have two pieces for the lower part now this lower part you are not cutting out anything on the dart so because the reason is because your slit is only in the front and not at the back so this is what you have for the back block so once we cut out our neckline we'll have our perfect back block so we'll go ahead now and set this aside 
so guys now i've gone ahead to couple this up so what i basically did is this so for the fabric i went ahead to iron my paper stay just to give it like a form of structure and i also went ahead to attach our bustier our wording and i'm making use of the medium form of wording so this is basically what we have so the next thing i want to show you guys now is how to get your mono strap effect so the first thing you are going to do is to go ahead and fold your fabric into two Go ahead and fold your fabric into two this way. Once you are done folding your fabric into two, you go ahead and take your shoulder measurement. So our shoulder measurement now is seven and a half inches. So this is our shoulder measurement. So from your shoulder measurement to your arm O, we have nine inches. Shoulder measurement to arm O, we have nine inches. So you basically connect this now to give you your arm o okay this is your arm o so let's go ahead now and take our neckline so for the wideness of the neckline we are making use of three and a half inches for our neckline so i have three and a half inches here three and a half inches here for the neckline we've marked our shoulder and we have our arm o so we are going to open this up now so by the time you open this up this is basically what you have so your arm o is at this part while on this part you don't have anything so on this other part now you are going to go ahead and mark the number of inches you want for your off shoulder and note that that totally depends on you on how deep you want it to be so you can make use of five inches five and a half six it depends on how deep you want it to be so i'm going to make it of six inches i'm going to make it of six inches so what i'm going to do now basically is i'm going to connect this line of our six inches up to this neckline so basically connect it this way up to your neckline so you can see mark your off shoulder point we went ahead to mark our neckline our arm or just connect this part up to this neckline so this is what we are going to have if you have any question please drop it in the comment section i'll go ahead now and cut this out and show you guys what it looks like so guys after cutting it out this is what we have you can see that we have this part to be our shoulder and then we have this part to be our off shoulder and this is what the front block looks like so basically we are going to be using the front block to cut out the back block so for the back block i just went ahead to stitch it together so that it can give me a single piece right so once i'm done go ahead and place the front block on the back block this way and the reason why i advise that you place it this way is because you can know what part should be for your regular arm and what part should be for your off shoulder so this will just help you out to know what parts you know you are using for your regular shoulder and what part should be for your off shoulder so this is basically what it sh should look like so what i'm going to do now is i'm just basically going to go ahead now and cut this out okay just go ahead now and cut this out and then i'll show you guys what it looks like so guys after cutting it out this is what we have so you can see where we have our one shoulder and you can see this part to be our off shoulder so the next thing we are going to do now is to cut out the back block so for the back block now i've gone ahead to join it together so that we can have a single piece for the back block and now the reason why i basically join it together is because so that we can have the one shoulder falling at the same part so you will see that by the time i placed it this way right place it this way we discover that what you have is this part should be where your regular shoulder should be and this part should be your off shoulder and that is the reason why it is necessary for you to cut out so guys this is what the front block looks like you can see what we have for the upper part of our front block we've also gone ahead to turn it with the lining and you can see what it looks like now for the lower part of the front block this is what we have you can see your slits so you can see where we have our slits we've also gone ahead also to turn it with our lining so what we are basically going to do now is to go ahead and place the lower side of your front block on the upper side of your front block and then you go ahead and 
stitch this together so by the time you stitch this you are going to have one single piece for the front block so we'll basically go ahead now and stitch it you can see that the front block will give us a single piece once you are done stitching that so guys after joining it together this is what we have for the front block so you can see we have complete piece don't forget to stitch your dots at the lower side of this dress now you can see what our slit looks like this is for the front block why for the back block we've also for the back block we've also gone ahead now to couple this up and you also fix in your zipper at this part of your back block so you can see that we have a single piece go ahead now and place your back block you know go ahead and place the front block on the back block together now this is what we have place the front block and the back block together now you will discover that both sides like for your front block and for your back block you have your one shoulder at the same part and for this other part you have your off shoulder so this is basically what it looks like so the next thing you are going to do now is to go ahead and take your bust measurements your waist measurements and your hip measurements so once you are done with that you just go ahead and stitch it all the way down so if your bust measurement is 40 divided by 2 you have 20 you go ahead and check out what you have for your bust we have 22 inches so it means that we have two inches for our sewing allowance so you mark one inch on this part you mark one inch on this part Take your bust measurement if your bust measurement is 40 inches divided by two you have 20 you check out what you have here you have 22 inches mark one inch on both sides for your waist also you also check out what you have for your waist we have 20 inches but we need 18 inches you mark one inch on both sides for your hip measurements now we have 42 inches which is 21 we have 23 inches mark one inch on both sides so you basically go ahead now and connect this together and you also connect this part together all the way down so once you are done stitching this and also you couple this up your dress is ready so i'll go ahead and do that and show you guys what it looks like on the mannequin and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or any topic you want us to make a video on so now look at you can see with this method that we did now you can see our slits at this side and it falls automatically where you have your dart line you can see this is our dart line it falls automatically where you have your dart line and this is basically what it looks like so i hope you guys have learned a lot feel free to drop your questions and then let me go ahead and put this on the mannequin and show you guys what it looks like